Across the Caribbean, four sovereign states are increasingly focused on mitigating the effects of global mercury pollution. Jamaica and St. Kitts and Nevis have already ratified the Minamata Convention on Mercury, an international treaty that aims to protect human health and the environment from man-made releases of mercury and mercury compounds. The convention is named after Minamata Bay, Japan, where in the early 20th century, thousands of people were poisoned by mercury-polluted industrial wastewater released into the bay. As of August 2018, 95 countries have become party to the treaty. Jamaica decided to ratify the Minamata Convention on Mercury because we are committed to the global effort to protect human health and the environment from the man-made sources of mercury pollution to the environment. It was important for St. Kitts and Nevis as the smallest independent nation in the Western Hemisphere to showcase not only to our nationals but to the international community that St. Kitts and Nevis takes the health of its citizens, its residents and visitors and the protection of its natural environment very seriously. St. Lucia and Trinidad and Tobago hope to follow suit. We have to contribute to tackling the problem of mercury pollution. So this is why St. Lucia is considering very seriously accession to the convention. The government wanted to take a proactive approach and do some groundwork first before we actually signed on. Based on the past work that we have done so far, we have been actively considering acceding. The Tobago House of Assemblies clean, green, safe and serene mantra is very much aligned to the Minamata Convention and the Mercury Project. The world needed a treaty on mercury management because the naturally occurring element is highly toxic and, once released into the environment, persists for generations, affecting the health of people around the world. Mercury is found in some common consumer products, from fluorescent light bulbs to some medical devices such as thermometers and blood pressure gauges. If these are broken or improperly disposed of, mercury can be released. Some skin lightening creams may also contain mercury. It is also released by the extraction and refining of fossil fuels and during production of cement and refining of alumina. Trace amounts are emitted when diesel and natural gas are burned for electricity generation and transportation. All four Caribbean states have conducted inventories to identify the main man-made sources of mercury and mercury compounds and roughly estimate their releases. Jamaica found that the majority of its mercury was released by the bauxite alumina sector. St. Kitts and Nevis learned that over 70% of its releases were from mercury-added consumer products that are imported into all four countries. St. Lucia's inventory revealed that its major sources were consumer and medical products. Combined, they account for 90% of all releases. Trinidad and Tobago discovered that over 75% of its releases were from the energy sector's extraction and use of fuels. From a global perspective, the combined mercury releases of these four states are small, but mercury is extremely toxic in even small amounts of prolonged exposure over time. Based on the total inventory from all sources identified, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago are each responsible for about 4,500 kilograms of mercury releases a year, while St. Lucia and St. Kitts and Nevis each release less than 100 kilograms annually. But mercury cycles globally and knows no boundaries. As with plastics, our neighbors' outputs soon grace our shores. When mercury is released from sources um, within the region or outside the region, mercury actually travels and their compounds travel through the water and the air. Exposing yourself to more mercury than your body can get rid of through diet or otherwise can do serious damage to your organs and nervous system. Researchers at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies have analyzed some fish samples and identified that the larger species tested tend to bioaccumulate more organic mercury over the course of their lives. Chemistry lecturer Dr. Terry Mohammed has some advice for Caribbean fish eaters. There are two things that you want to do. 
first thing you'd want to do is be selective of the type of fish that you eat. You want to go for the slightly smaller fishes, not the larger ones or the older fishes. The second thing is regulate the frequency as well. According to community pediatrician Dr. Jacqueline Bird in St. Lucia, mercury exposure is everyone's concern, but some demographics are particularly vulnerable. We really want people just to be aware and to think about limiting exposure, especially in very young children and in pregnant women. The person that is at highest risk is actually the unborn baby or the fetus and by extension very young children just because their nervous systems and their brain uh, they are, de are developing at a rapid rate. Skin lightening creams and soaps are another source of exposure because some may contain mercury compounds that may not be listed as ingredients. UE testing of these cosmetics has found varying levels of mercury. The problem with skin bleaching creams and the use of mercury that mercury absorbs directly through your skin. I would recommend that you um, you reduce or regulate what you use. All right, read your labels very carefully, first thing. And if you can reduce it, reduce it. Cut it out if you could. I mean, enjoy your natural beauty. As Caribbean states move towards accession and implementation of the Minamata Convention, they are preparing to meet its obligations. The treaty calls for the phase-out of imports, exports and manufacture of certain mercury-added products by 2020, including electrical relays and switches and, of course, fluorescent bulbs. That will be no easy feat. Trinidad and Tobago alone imported over 2 million compact fluorescent bulbs in 2015. Most, if not all, will end up in landfills. Under the convention, any entity that generates mercury waste will be expected to capture and dispose of it in an environmentally sound manner. But at the moment, none of the countries is equipped to separate its mercury waste. As it relates to hazardous waste, there needs to be a more focused approach. There isn't any system in place currently, and the inventory report would allow us to determine which areas need to be prioritized or targeted. I think it's a nervous at present. We are working towards safely storing first the mercury or mercury added products at our landfills or off-site as well and uh, we are looking at efforts in terms of removing these in an environmentally sound manner at a later date once we have accum accumulated enough to ship feasibly. Yet there are reasons for optimism about regional mercury management. In 2014 the government of St. Kitts and Nevis instituted a free bulb exchange program 24,000 households traded in their incandescent and fluorescent bulbs for energy-efficient, mercury-free LEDs. Jamaica, too, is taking steps to promote the use of LEDs over CFLs to reduce energy costs. The LED promotion program will also help the government to meet its convention commitment to CFL phase-out dates. St. Kitts and Nevis's dental community has already phased out the use of dental amalgam commonly referred to as silver fillings, after conducting independent research into its dangers over a decade ago. In all four islands, dental amalgam as well as mercury-added blood pressure gauges and thermometers have become less commonly available. Certain industrial activities are estimated to be major contributors to total mercury emissions and regulation remains a key concern. In Jamaica, as the country fulfills its Minamata obligations, the bauxite alumina industry will be increasingly monitored to ensure that mercury residues are properly disposed of. In Trinidad and Tobago, one multinational energy facility already captures its mercury releases for export and proper disposal. But without accession and regulatory support, the rest of the sector has no binding commitments for mercury management. Further technical and financial assistance are needed in all four countries to ensure the environmentally sound management of mercury, including testing, proper storage of mercury wastes, and awareness raising strategies. For the Caribbean states that have already acceded, the 2020 deadline for phase out of mercury added products is not far off, and action must be taken to remain in compliance with the Convention. The Minamata Convention envisions a low mercury future which the Caribbean must help bring about for the global well-being of its people and the environment.